Okay, so today we got to talk about Jansen Dunn, and wow, Saturday night was a wild one. Let's talk about it after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I'm not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Okay, today we got to talk about four-star athlete. Defense back, Jansen Dunn. Now, Jansen Dunn, as I mentioned, four-star out of Bowling Green, Kentucky, and was number one player in the state of Kentucky, according to the top 247, and a composite four-star recruit and a top 100 player, according to, yes, the top 247, for which, you know, we just saw the rankings release come out earlier this week. So, I had been talking about earlier all week that Oklahoma needed a win, and it needed a win in a big way. As you could see, Ohio State was really pulling away. <laughs> Ohio State's going to figure into this in a big way. But also, North Carolina and Mac Brown just basically roping off the state and turning it into a number two ranked team ranked in 2021. And then if you're looking behind them, it's like Clemson, and it's like Florida, and then it's Notre Dame. And then you get down to like 26, and you see LSU, and then you get into the 30s, and then you see Oklahoma, and then you get into 39, you see Alabama, who's picked up two commits in two days. Once again, Oklahoma needed a win. And today, or yesterday, more to the point, OU was expected to host its spring game, and you would see commitments. So then, later that evening, Saturday night, you see, not only does Lincoln Riley tweet out the eyes, which is a subtweet, which is his way of signaling that they got a commitment, but he kind of doubled down on it and said, hey, look, uh, we didn't have a spring game, still a big day and a great day to be sooner and all's well. An hour later, national recruiting analyst Steve Wiltfunk flips his crystal ball from OU to Jansen to Ohio State to Jansen, and then all hell breaks loose, right? Because not long after Lincoln Riley had tweeted the eyes, you saw Jansen tweet, big news coming later tonight. As of this video, that news has still not come out, but we have seen a number of moves. We've seen recruiting analysts be like, oh, wow, that flip. And then my man Brandon Drum takes to OUinsider.com to basically outline in some detail what had happened. And what had happened basically was Ohio State made themselves known back into this game. And your worst nightmare is coming into fruition if you're an Oklahoma fan because it seems like Ohio State is just getting all of the recruits and not just some of the recruits, but the ones that you really want. And it's not as if Ohio State is just getting the guys that they want. They're also getting the one or two dudes that you wanted for your one class, right? Whether it be Tumise Adelie or Travion Henderson or Kyle McCord or even Ja'Kalen Johnson, right? You can keep going down the entire list. Donovan Jackson. All of these dudes are awesome. And this is one of the reasons why I've been talking about Ohio State heavily and talking about how they are putting together not just their number one class, but perhaps the greatest class in the recruiting rankings era, which goes back to 1999. Now, if Jansen Dunn ends up going through and committing with Ohio State, it only gets better. But again, Oklahoma needed a win because with four commits in the boat, you would like to see that number get to eight or even nine, especially as you see 16 for Ohio State and 14 for North Carolina. And we saw Alabama just triple the number of commits that it had from one to three in two days. And it seemed that this was going to be moving day or moving weekend because so many kiddos were going to be making their visits to spring games. And it feels like that if Jansen Dunn had an opportunity to commit at a spring game, not only would this have commit have stuck, but it probably would have come with a number of other commits. Now, there is a half, nearly half dozen dudes that are real OU lanes, and they just haven't come out and done it because nobody actually wants to commit during this COVID-19 crisis, except it seems Ohio State is getting those dudes to come on and publicly just say, I'm going to Ohio State, even in the middle of this thing. So you wouldn't necessarily think of that as an impediment because it's happening. It's just not happening for Oklahoma. And that's really what's frustrating for an OU fan, right? You're expecting some of this goodwill to come your way. And when you see things like a flip inside of an hour, yeah, you're going to get a little bit upset about it. And it's one of the things that makes recruiting kind of frustrating and kind of exciting and exhilarating because this is a wild story and it's full of wild stories. That's what recruiting is. Think about Zach Evans. We still don't know where he's going to play college football. And that's one of the best running backs in the 2020 class, a class that is basically over and done with. And one of those dudes would have been already on campus, if not already enrolled in school. And then you take a look at Jamar Chase, who is the reigning Belitnikoff Award winner, and how he was all ready to go to Texas Christian, but an ESPN broadcast just went too long. They couldn't get to him. He couldn't take the Texas Christian gloves out of the box and commit on television, and he took it as an omen. And then we have David Beatty, 
putting a cardboard fence around his house where he was going to be committed to Kansas for a week. All before he ends up going, hey, I'm going to go to Florida. His dad goes, do you look at the depth chart, see how many wide receivers they got? He says, oh, I'm not going to go to Florida. Ends up at LSU. You see those things more often than not, right? But only at the higher levels, right? Four-star, five-star, blue-chipper recruits. And when you talk about the blue-chip ratio and you talk about how many kids that actually need to be four or five stars, you're also talking about what kind of a class can get you in position to win a national championship. And that's what we're talking about, right? And it feels like Ohio State's putting themselves in a position not just win a national championship in 2020, whenever that season starts, but in 21, 22, 23, because of the class they're putting together right now in 21, right? And you would like to see Oklahoma being able to do the same thing. And you would like to see it on paper. You would like to see it clearly. But I'm going to tell you what many people say to negatively crude against Ohio State, which is, Let's just wait to see what the classes look like, right? Because I'm a believer in commitments because I like to believe in the best of what kids say that they're going to do. Sometimes it goes the way that you think it's going to go. Sometimes it doesn't. You've been burned. I've been burned. It happens, right? Sometimes things change. The facts on the ground change. You don't necessarily want to go through what you're doing. You might find a better situation. Maybe it's just that your mom was got pissed off by the coach or vice versa. Whatever it might be, Right. Sometimes things just don't happen. And I get that some folks feel some kind of way and they want to vent their, this frustration to the recruits. Don't do that. That's a bad look. It's a bad look for everybody, right? Because you're supposed to be the adult. Let the teenager do what the teenager's going to do. If you are invested into the teenager, that's kind of your fault, I think. I don't think that's the teenager's fault. I really don't. That said, wow. How do you feel if you're Lincoln Riley to see <laughs> to tweet those eyes and then find out? May, 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 maybe, may, maybe not. <sighs> But that's what you get paid $6 million to do is to try to make that work. And, you know, while it would have been cool to be able to talk about the commit that Oklahoma had picked up, it's probably going to be cool to talk about the next commit that Oklahoma picks up. But right now, all we're really talking about is Lincoln Riley's shoes. <laughs> Cool video. I like Jordans, but like everybody else, would like to see that that list grow just a little bit quicker and a little bit more and kind of come to resemble that of a top 10 class. Have to wait and see on what that's going to look like. All right. That's it for me. Deuces.